Hi there, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about box plots and how to use Seaborn library to make really nice box plots. I'm going to run you through the theory of box plots from my matplotlib videos, the link up the top right. Then I'm going to show you how to make a very simple box plot. Then I'm going to take you through making a more sophisticated and more elaborate box plot for presentation purposes. I'll also show you how to present a box plot so that your audience gets the message as quickly as possible. Without further ado, let's kick it off. Welcome back. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about box plots. If you like my videos, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'm doing my best to produce a lot of high quality educational videos, so be a part of it. Box plots are called the five data point summary. What they really show. Let's start from the very left side. This is the minimum. Say you went around your neighborhood, you asked everyone's age, and the youngest person in your neighborhood is one years old. So that sits on this green min here. The opposite of that is definitely the max. So there is a lady who is 116 years old in your neighborhood, well done, and that's the max. That kind of shows you the range of the age. The first part of the box is called first quantile. So if there is a first quantile, there is definitely a second quantile, which is the median, and the third quantile. Let's go back to first quantile. What does first quantile mean? First quantile means the data point or the age data point that 25% of the data is smaller than that and 75% of the data is larger than that. Imagine you went around, asked 500 people's ages, there are 25% of people in your area that their age is lower than 21 years old and 75% of the people are older than 21 years old. So that's the first quantile here. What is the third quantile? So that's the opposite. 75% of people are younger than that age. For example, this is 77 years old. And 25% of people are older than that age. That's the third quantile. So then that leaves us with the middle, which is the median. Second quantile is also called the median. Surprise, surprise. 50% of people are younger than that. 50% of people are older than that. So imagine if this whisker was really long, that meant that there are a couple of people who are really, really young compared to the rest of the group and the opposite. Okay, now that you know what we use box plots for, let me quickly run you through the structure of Seaborn for various plotting functions. If you have been following my series, you will remember this, but if not, let me tell you what it looks like. Seaborn has three main top functions, the rel plot for relational analysis, the dis plot for distributional analysis, and cat plot for a categorical data analysis. You don't really need to remember all the sub functions that live underneath them. I mean, you will get used to do them, but for starters, just remember the top three types of functions, and then you can set what type or what kind of graph you wanna get. For example, if you wanna make a box plot, you can easily either use the box plot function or use the cat plot function and set the kind equals box. I'll show you how. Let's go ahead, make a new Jupyter Notebook, give it a proper name, C, Seaborn underscore video number nine, and this one is for box plots. Import Seaborn as SNS. Before I go ahead, if you want to follow along, I have left a link to my GitHub repository for this specific tutorial in the description below. Feel free to download and go ahead with me. Today, I'm going to be using the flights data from the Seaborn load data set function. Seaborn kindly offers some free data for us to use, and I'm just going to load the flights data. Let me show you how it looks like. Let's look at the top five rows of the data. There is the year, the month, and the number of passengers. So this is some airline data. Let's make the box plot of passengers. We want to understand what is the distribution of passengers over various years. Now, what I will do, I'll say sns.catplot. I'm gonna use the bigger function. The data equals flights, and I wanna set the x variable to passengers. What it will do, it will give me a strip plot. If you haven't seen my video on strip plots, click on the link up the top right where I have taken you through everything you need to about strip plots. But in this video, I'm not really after a strip plot. I want to get a box plot. I either have to say set the kind to box and it will give me a box plot. Or if I don't want to do that, I'll just get rid of the kind. And instead of saying the cat plot, I'll say give me a box plot and it will give me the same thing. Let's go back to cat 
plot. Let's set the kind to box plot. The reason I like the cat plot even more because there is more gears to play with to change the visual visualization, look at different categories of data, and I'm going to show you how. If I wanted to make this vertical, because now the box plot is horizontal, if I just wanted to make it vertical, I simply will say y equals passenger. So what it will do, it will just rotate the graph 90 degrees. Let's do a quick interpretation of this data. What I can tell you from this graph is that the minimum number of passengers are around 100, the maximum is around 640-ish, the median is around 270, the median is a measure where 50% of the data is less and 50% of the data is more than that number. So it means that if the median was 270 in this example, it would mean that there are 50% more than 270 people and there is 50% less than 270 people. If I were to look at different month of the year and try to understand what is the box plot for a different month of the year, all I need to do is to add an X variable. I have the Y variable, which is the number of passengers. And if I add an X variable to the X axis, I can look at different month. What I will do, I'll set the X variable to equals month and run. So now I have box plots for every single month. What sticks out really quickly is that there is heaps of passengers in July and August because the box plots are sticking out. However, in November and probably in February, we don't have a lot of passengers. If I wanted to make them horizontal, I'll just swap X with Y and I will get the same box plots in a horizontal direction. Okay, let's revert it back to Y and X. I like it vertical. Now, would I be able to plot this for various years? Yes, I can do that. And if I look at different years, it's funny from 1949 to 1960, in general, the number of passengers have increased, which kind of makes sense. That's when airplanes were kind of kicking up. Now, for the purposes of the next exercise, I'm gonna load the tips data set. So Seaborn load data set and I want this time to load tips data. Let's look at the top five rows. There is the total bill, the amount of tip, the sex of the person who was visiting this restaurant, were they a smoker or not, what day of the week it was, was that dinner or lunch, and what was the size of the people who were coming with that person. If I go ahead and do sns.cat plot, I'm still using the cat plot. The data is the tips data, the x variable. So along the x axis, I wanna look at smokers and non-smokers. So I'll say X equals smokers. And I wanna see if there is a difference between smokers tipping more or non-smokers tipping more. So for Y, I'll look that amount of tip. As I said before, the default for cat plot is a, is a strip plot. And all we need to do is to set the kind to box. That will give me two box plots, one for people who are smokers, one for people who are non-smokers, I can't really tell if non-smokers or smokers are tipping more. However, I can see that the median for smokers is a bit high. Can I look at different days of the week and understand if people are tipping on different days of the week? Let's set it today. And funnily enough, on Saturday, it looks like there are some outliers that are tipping a lot of money compared to other days. Well, why do I call these outliers these points? Because they are not able to fit into the box plot. So you can see for Sundays, there are no outliers on the higher side nor on the lower side. However, for Saturday, on the higher side, there are some outliers that are not sitting within the box plot. And the same applies to Thursday. Could I break this with different sex of people who were visiting? Of course I can. If I set the hue to sex, I will get two plots for every single day. So for example, for Thursday, I have blue for male, orange for females. Same for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But in general, you can see that Saturdays and Sundays are good days for the staff of the restaurant. Now, can I switch this to make it a horizontal? Yeah, just simply switch X to Y and Y to X. So, uh, you will get a horizontal box plot. But I guess for this one, I still like the vertical one. I'm gonna revert it back. So now you might wanna say, okay, I wanna understand what males and females are doing in terms of tipping people. And also I wanna understand what is happening on the day of the week, Saturday, Sunday, Friday, Thursday. But I also want to understand the different meal. I wanna understand lunch and dinner differences. So all you need to do is to add a new column for plots. You want two plots next to each other because otherwise it's gonna be really busy if you wanna plot everything on top of each other. So I'm gonna set a new column and I'm gonna say, time to be the new variable. What it will do, it will set the time for lunch on the left and dinner on the right. 
very quickly you can say that okay there was no one dining in saturday on sunday for lunchtime and there was not a lot of people dining for dinner on thursday anyways and this is a really good way of understanding what a structure lives in your data if you wanted to put them on top of each other change the column to row you will get the lunch graph on the top and dinner at the bottom i like it in a columnar way uh, let's make it back to simple. I'm just going to get rid of all these extra things because I want to show you something really interesting. So we're looking at different days of the week on the x-axis and the amount of tip on the y-axis. If you have seen my video on swarm plot, the link up the top right there, you can add more information onto this plot by actually plotting the markers on this graph. How you can do it? Well, you can't do it with a cat plot. Let's go down again. Let's make a new box plot this time. So I'm using the box plot, not the parent plot of cat plot. Let's use the box plot, set the data to tips, set the X variable to day. So because I want to look at different days of the week, set the Y variable to tip. That's easy. That will give me the same plot. And what I want to do, I want to go ahead and say, I want to use the swarm plot and put the same things on the top. So copy that and paste it here. What it will do, it will plot the actual markers from a swarm plot on top of your box plot. So if you want to make it visible, more visible, set the color to probably black so that you can see the dots more. Let's add some alpha to it because it's too dark. Let's just make it 0.4, just a bit more, maybe 0.6. Yeah, not only I can see the box plot itself, but I can see the data that lives there. So if you want to know what is a swarm plot really quickly, it shows the distribution of data without plotting the data points on top of each other. So it's like a scatter plot without plotting the data on top of each other. With looking at this box plot, let me show you how I would present this. This is a series of box plots on the data of tips from the Seaborn data set. What I'm showing you here are four different categories of days from Thursday to Sunday. And on the y-axis, I'm showing you the amount of tip that people gave to the staff of this restaurant. Friday does not have a lot of customers. However, Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays are busy days. People tend to tip more on Sundays in general, but on Saturdays, there are people who are really generous with the restaurant staff. Fridays, given that there are not many visitors, is not a really surprising day. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and help this channel grow. Thank you.